every one of your patients, number one, should know how old their house is. And, and before they even buy a house or rent a house or rent an apartment, they ought to find out what its history is. They ought to know how old it is, what the pipes are made out of, you know, whether there's paint that's in the house that's got lead in it. And be proactive to try to avoid that exposure. Uh, we ought to make sure that that have a, a diet that's appropriate. Uh, a certain amount of calcium will help prevent absorption of lead. If you have a diet that's low in calcium, your body is going to absorb whatever lead it gets exposed to. Same thing with iron. So I am going to say to, to the general pediatrician or the general family doctor, be proactive, not reactive. I don't remember the exact percentage, but it's less than 50% of the chil child, children below six years of age have in fact ever been tested at least once. Very small percentage. The problem is that all we've been doing for the 40 years that I've been in this state is collecting the data. Uh, we don't have a lot of attempted intervention because everybody shrugs their shoulders and said, who's going to pay for it? So we don't. Some landlords are more cooperative than others. It's a public health problem, and let's face that. Problem is, when I face the, the town councils, a large number of the people sitting on the town council are, guess what, they're landlords. And so we're not successful at, at getting those rules and regulations. Oh, wow, absolutely. A absolutely. Uh, you're drinking water, you're going out into the environment where there's lead in the soil, so you're still going to be exposed. You're not going to end up in Marcus's office with a lead level of 40, but you're going to be walking around with lead levels of 2, 3, and 5, and perhaps damaging your brain. We always tell people not to cook with hot water. One of the reasons is that the hot water is much more able to dissolve lead. Uh, there's a recent study showing that lead levels in water go up during the summer, go down during the winter, go up during the summer, go down during the winter. And that's really that very, very high levels of lead. And it, you know, we, we admit patients to our hospital with lead levels of over 45 to treat. 45 micrograms per deciliter of, of, of blood. Uh, it's, a, it's a, an artificial number. There is absolutely no information to show that treating those children at lead levels of 45 has any long-term effect on them to that. There was a study looking at children who had lead levels between 25 and 45. There were lots of problems in the study. I refused to participate in the study because I didn't like the way the study was designed. But it showed that the children that were given the medication had no better outcome than the children that were not giving medication to, to try to lower those levels of lead. In fact, there was some evidence that giving the medication actually made things worse. It could be that for some reason people were continued to be exposed to lead and given the medication may have actually enhanced the absorption of the lead. There are a lot of potential explanations for it. That was a National Institute of Environmental Health study. It was called the Treating Lead Children, the TLC study, and I believe it was from oh, probably mid-1990s. We really need to have grassroots screaming about, you know, get the deck on lead out of water. California published, they looked at 15,000 sources of lead and found not a single one exceeded five parts per billion. In Europe, they lowered it years ago to 10 parts per billion, and they're considering it lowering it to five. There were several schools, one school actually had as high as 500. Uh, and in, in Flint, there was somewhere at the 1,200. Again, we shouldn't talk about individual cities. That's really kind of unfair. From what I read in the, in the, in the media, that's, that's what's happening. Uh, I have real serious problems with wholesale use of bottled water. Uh, what, it, what that's doing to our environment, in both upstream as well as downstream, 
I've, I've have a filter in my house. You could move into the house right now and have it contaminated. The faucets in your house were probably manufactured with brass inside them, and brass can be contaminated with lead. But in my house, we drink from the filter that's in the refrigerator. We cook with the water. We make coffee with the water that comes out of the filter. So I am buying into the National Science Foundation's certification that my filter is giving me water that has at least lower concentrations of lead than what my community. One of my uh, favorite things is to tell people to go read Ibsen's An Enemy of the People because I feel like I am constantly an enemy of the people. And my career is full of, of episodes where I've picked up a problem and nobody would listen to me until they were hit over the head with a hammer. The agenda for the water thing is to get the EPA to take another look, listen to all of the, the information out there, and say 15 is no good. Get away from the old routine of using kids as lead detectors. Wait until the kids got lead poisoning and then expect the, inspect the house. That's crazy. We have the science. We know what causes this. We know how to deal with what causes. We need to put our, our money where our mouth is.